Okay, episode 79, the sky is falling, Cornlick. All right. And welcome to Overtime, brought to you by Kingscast at www.kingscast.net. I'm Keith Cornelick. And I'm Chris Kalzius. And we are back from Staples Center, and all I can say is, ugh. That's right, Kings fans. Uh, it's episode 79. We're going to be talking about the San Jose game, talk about the Columbus Blue Jackets game, talk about who the hell is Dwight King, give our tribute to Finland, and again, talk about the line combinations. So here we go, episode 79, entitled, The Sky is Falling. Cheers, Dennis Bernstein. So coming into San Jose, uh, where we never really do all that well, uh, we were playing a Sharks team that was on the uh, cusp. They were sitting in ninth place, Kings sitting comfortably, first place in the Western Conference, and the Kings screwed the proverbial pooch. Yeah, they did. I mean, obviously Bernier was in goal, Parse was on that top line, so you have um, automatically a sort of a interesting situation. But it definitely showed that night in the game. It was uh, The Kings just seemed like they were a half step behind. Uh, they were definitely missing Willie Mitchell that game. They just seemed sort of lazy was it i don't know what i don't know what i'd call it it was just they were off i think so i think one of the reasons why we were able to keep the wins together why drew dowdy was out is because we had those defensive stalwarts you know anchoring the blue line in willie mitchell and rob scuderi and uh, i know last time we said we keep winning with or without people but clearly willie mitchell and to a certain degree alexei ponikarovsky are being missed defensively for the Los Angeles Kings. Broke the six-game winning streak, which was awesome there for a while. It was good. We knew it was going to happen. You know, win streaks are almost like a fault line. You, more pressure builds the more you win. You have to sort of release that a little bit. So I don't think a loss is the end of the world. No. It was on the road. It was against a division opponent. Uh, not that bad, I thought. But, uh, you know. I think at the end of the day, when you're playing the top team in the Western Conference, uh, you're coming out and you're trying to play your best hockey because you want to beat them. And right now, the Kings <laughs> are them. And other teams are coming in, and they're putting their best foot forward. I mean, San Jose was on a not a very good streak, and they were called out by their coach, uh, Todd McC McClellan. Yeah, yeah. And they were called out by their coach, Todd McClellan, and, uh, you know, it just kind of looked like everything was kind of trending down. Los Angeles Kings come into town, and finally they find their team game and get it done. Yeah. Uh, so playing the Blue Jackets tonight. BJs. The BJs. Uh, First of all, I want to apologize to the people that follow me on Twitter. I made a lot of BJ <laughs> references online. And look, I am just immature. I have the sense of humor of a 16-year-old boy. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's the Blue Jackets. You know, right? BJs, Blue Jackets? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, come on, people. Yo, what up, Kings fans? It's BJ time. Kings are looking to stay perfect at home at 9-0. and Looking for them to play hard and stay strong was a rough game and again the people that were calling out uh jonathan bernier on twitter for letting in all those goals against san jose i use a point of reference for our defensive coverage because jonathan quick uh was really left hang hung out to dry i don't know that he really gave up a bad goal sometimes it's hard to see at our you know angle at staples center but that said i i don't think it's the goaltender's fault i think it's a defensive breakdown and matt green who we love on king's cast we adore him has not been good. Yeah, so Matt Green definitely struggling a little bit in the defensive zone, and we're really counting on this guy right now to, to really pick it up. Obviously, he's not going to score, but when you guys have guys like uh, Jawiski and Muzzin in the lineup, you really count on a guy like Matt Green to really step it up, and he definitely did not tonight. Hey, what's up, Kings fans? All right, so it's the end of the first, and the BJs came early, uh, but the Kings uh, sprung back to attention. 1-1, one, one, um, I don't know, Kings are just looking a little slow, a little limp out there. Um, Hopefully they can uh, bring it home. Uh, you know who did step it up, of course, again, was the second line with goals by Ryan Smith and Justin Williams. Again, Justin Williams has nine goals on the season. Nine. In 16 <laughs> games. That's pretty good. Yeah, you take that. Definitely a surprise. Um, and Smith had another goal, too. Like that second line, obviously, clicking. You don't mess with that one. Every other line, though, I... I, I the first line, obviously, we talk about this all the time, every episode so far this regular season. Uh, obviously, Richardson is up there now. Uh, who is this, this first line is just, they just can't find their way. They can't find the personnel. It's just not working out. It's, it's really discombobulated. I think Brown and Kopitar are working well together. I think they've sort of regenerated that chemistry from yep. back when Patrick O'Sullivan was, center, was on the left wing. Uh, but I think they really have found it. Uh, but there is a, there's a hole there. All right, Kings fans, it was 2-2 after the second. Now, usually BJs keep you out of the box. Not the case tonight. Uh, look at the Kings to stay up. Let's do it. I thought we had this one. 
you know, it was a good game. It's the game. BJs. Of course we had this yeah, one. Yeah, it's the BJs. You know, they're one of those teams that will never be good. Uh, congratulations, Rich, Rick Nash, for being there for the rest of your life. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was one of those games back and forth until the third period uh, where things sort of melted down again. You know, gave up three unanswered goals. Ended up losing 5-3. to three. All right, Kings lose again. He can't be perfect at home. 5-3, uh, the final score. The BJs, they came up. Kings blew it. All right, so in place of Alexei Ponikarovsky, who is on the injured reserve, uh, the Kings needed to call up someone, and that person was Dwight King, who... Most people really don't know who that is. We're going to tell you about that in a new segment we like to call, Who the Hell is Dwight King? He's from Meadow Lake, Saskatoon. He's 6'3", 225 pounds. He was drafted in the fourth round, 109th overall in 2007. He's played for the Lethbridge Hurricanes, Ontario Reign, and the Manchester Monarchs. He's physical and gritty. He has nine points in 16 games for the Manchester Monarchs on their Calder Cup run. He is at best a poor man's Alexei Ponikarovsky. He is not Glenn Murray. Ladies and gentlemen, Dwight King. Okay, Kings fans, so we have a lot of followers on YouTube, and uh, obviously the top two countries are the United States and Canada, obviously. Of course. But the third might surprise you a little bit. It is not Russia, it is not Sweden, it is not Slovenia. Uh, it's actually the great nation of Finland. Now, I know in the past we said some sort of questionable things about Finland. Oh, you double vowel mother Oh, you reindeer loving punk! Oh, you cheap shot artist. But we would like to make that up, and we're gonna give you our top five favorite things about the great nation of Finland. Number one, Jarko Rutu. Now, nothing says classy and brave like biting another player's fingers. Andrew Peters, you totally deserve that, and you, my friend, deserve a medal. Now, that is primal instinct. Number two, Nokia, the communications giant and rubber boot maker also based in Finland. The theater across from Staples Center also bears its moniker. If it were anything else, it would just be weird. Like Sony. Number three, Nightwish. This Finnish symphonic metal band has been inspiring the world with its fantasy and goth-based music for over a decade. Now, if you don't get emotional listening to the song Sleepwalker, you are simply not alive. Lucy Jokinen, shootout specialist, has been impressing us with his sense of style for years. He single-handedly taught Nordic men how not to dress gay. So oh, number five, we couldn't get them all in there, but honorable mentions go to Yari Curry, The Sauna, Rainbows, The Band Lordy, and Cloudberry Liqueur. So thank you, Finland, and all you delightful Finnish people. Thank you for watching King's Cast, like it's an episode of The Dude Sins. So our gift to you, well, you're watching it. So even though there isn't one King's player that's finished in the entire organization, here's to you, Finland. Kitos! All right, so we have an East Coast uh, trip coming up, Chris. Uh, we got four teams. We're hoping to go two and two. It's going to be very, very interesting. So we will be right back at you on Monday. Well, really Tuesday once we, or even Wednesday when we finish the edit of the show. Yeah. For our Thanksgiving episode, that is episode 80. Yeah. High five, yeah. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. I'm Keith Kornelik. And I'm Chris Kelsey. And thank you for watching Overtime by Kingscast.